Okay, we're going to talk about tonicity and fluid compartments and answer the questions, what's the difference between iso, hypo, and hypertonic solutions, and what happens to intra- and extracellular fluid when tonicity of plasma changes? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. In this illustration, those circles represent cells, and inside all the cells is intracellular fluid, which is separated from the extracellular compartment via the cell membrane which is permeable to water, but not salts like sodium or chloride. Capillaries are filled with plasma, and the endothelium lining the capillaries is permeable to water and salts, but not albumin. The interstitial fluid is the fluid between the cells, and combined with plasma is considered extracellular fluid. And so extracellular fluid is all the fluid outside of cells. Intracellular fluid is all the fluid inside cells. And from now on, those two terms will be abbreviated ICF and ECF. Now that was fun, wasn't it? Let's do it again. Except we're going to use this picture as well as this one that shows a bunch of rectangles. And the larger rectangle represents a collection of all the intracellular fluid for all the 70 trillion cells inside the body, which is separated from the external cellular compartment via the cell membrane. And how the extracellular fluid that surrounds all the cells, it really consists of plasma and interstitial fluid. But in talking about osmolarity, because the capillary is permeable to water and salts, we often consider extracellular fluid to just put plasma and interstitial fluid together. Now the question, how will adding different fluids to plasma affect intra- and extracellular fluid compartments? Now to answer that question, let's talk about breakfast. When I was a kid, we often had orange juice with breakfast, but it was the concentrated orange juice. You remember that frozen brick that's like, and then thud and hits in the bottom and you add three cups of water and then you stir it and you get orange juice. So the solutes plus the water will give us the orange juice solution. Now humor me for just a minute. Here's a glass of orange juice in the original jug that you pour some more juice in the cup. What will happen to the volume and concentration of the juice in the cup? Well, obviously the volume goes up, but the concentration doesn't change because it's the same concentration of the jug is in the cup. But now let's take this jug of juice and make it more concentrated and pour that into the original cup. What happens to the volume and concentration now? The volume goes up because we've added more, but also the concentration goes up. Now let's take the jug of juice and dilute it, make it less concentrated, and pour it inside the cup. What happens to the volume and concentration now? The volume goes up, but now we've diluted the juice so it becomes less concentrated. Take that cup and put it in the sun. As the sun evaporates water away, what will happen to the volume and concentration? As we lose water, the volume will go down, but the number of solutes in the cup remains the same, so that solution becomes more concentrated. And finally, let's take a jug of juice and just open a cork and let it drain. What happens to the volume and concentration? The volume will go down, but there's no change in concentration. Of course, this is not about cups of concentrated orange juice. The same principle applies to our uh, extracellular compartment, where the larger blue rectangle is intracellular fluid and the smaller turquoise one is extracellular fluid. And these two compartments are separated by the cell membranes, which are impermeable to salts, but permeable to water. The dashed lines is going to represent some shifted state as we add different fluids to the plasma. And the widths of the rectangles represents the volume of the compartments and the height of the rectangles represents the osmolarity. So with the shifted state I showed, identify the letter that most likely indicates the shifted state. Pause the video, determine A through E, which one shows the dashed lines change, and then press play again. The horizontal lines, the x-axis, is representing volume. And so what we see is the horizontal line for extracellular fluids gets bigger, which means there was an increase of extracellular fluid volume. In contrast, the horizontal line for intracellular fluid became smaller. So there's a decrease in volume of intracellular fluid. The y-axis or vertical lines represents the osmolarity of the compartments. Notice that the osmolarity of both compartments, that line got longer, taller, bigger. 
that means there's an increase of osmolarity in both compartments. Now, which of the letters shows that shifted state of the dashed lines? The letter D shows that. Now that we have a better idea about how the rectangles work, let's go through some problem sets together, shall we? Question number one, identify the letter that most likely demonstrates what occurs with an infusion of isotonic saline into the plasma using letters A through E. Identify which letter shows that state. Now, pause the video to determine which letter shows the dashed rectangular change and then press play again. We're going to add isotonic solution to the plasma. The volume of both the plasma and interstitial fluid get larger but there's no change in the osmolarity. This is like that example. So which letter shows this change? The letter A does. This is showing an isosmotic volume expansion, like an IV infusion of isotonic sodium chloride. When we add the isotonic solution to the extracellular fluid, there's an increase of the extracellular fluid volume, but there's no change in the osmolarity. Notice that the, the vertical line uh, does not change. We've added the sodium. The sodium added remains in the extracellular fluid compartment because the cell membrane is impermeable to salts. And as a result, there's no shift of water between the intra and extracellular fluid because there's no difference in osmolarity uh, between the two compartments. In the new steady state, extracellular fluid volume would be higher than normal. Everything else stays the same. Next question. Identify the letter that most likely demonstrates what occurs with an infusion of 3% saline, a hypertonic solution, into the plasma. Pause the video, determine which letter shows that, and then press play again. We're going to add a hypertonic solution to the plasma, which is like that example. So the plasma gets more concentrated, as does the interstitial fluid, so the volume and osmolarity of both plasma and interstitial fluid get bigger. But now, look, there's a difference in osmolarity between extra and intracellular fluid. Which way will water move? Well, water always moves towards the saltier environment until the concentrations equal each other. And that's what we get. Which letter shows this? Letter C shows this. This is a hyperosmotic volume expansion or a high sodium chloride intake. This is like what happens when you drink salt water. The infusion of hypertonic solution, it will increase extracellular fluid volume and total solute. Therefore, extracellular fluid osmolarity and volume increases. So transiently now, the extracellular fluid osmolarity is greater than the intracellular fluid osmolarity. Therefore, water shifts from the intra to extracellular fluid until the osmolarity equalizes. And as a result, in the new steady state, extracellular and intracellular fluid osmolarities will be higher and equal to each other, whereas what will, because of the water shift, the intracellular fluid volume goes down and the extracellular fluid volume goes up. All right, let's do another question. Identify the letter that most likely demonstrates what occurs with an infusion of hypotonic saline into the plasma. So pause the video, determine which letter shows this, and then press play. We're going to add hypotonic uh, solution to the plasma, which dilutes the plasma and dilutes the interstitial fluid, but increases the volume of both. But now we have a difference in osmolarity between intra and extracellular fluid. Which way will the water move? Water always moves towards the saltier compartment until the osmolarities equalize. And that's what we get. Which letter shows this change? The letter B shows this change. Let's show this now. An infusion of hypotonic solution will increase extracellular fluid volume, but we dilute the extracellular fluid and thus we decrease the extracellular fluid osmolarity. So we see the, uh, we now have the intracellular fluid is greater than extracellular fluid osmolarity, which causes water to shift from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid until their osmolarities equal. And as a result, in the new steady state, extra and intracellular fluid osmolarities will be lower and equal to each other. And we have an increase of both intra and extracellular fluid volume. And finally, let's identify the letter that most likely demonstrates a patient with fever, vomiting, and diarrhea and is losing more water than salt. Pause the video, find the letter, and then press play. 
This example is really the orange juice in the sun. We've lost water through evaporation, but we retain the same amount of solutes. So we've reduced volume, but we've increased osmolarity. And which letter shows this? D shows this. So this is like draining off fluid from the exercise of the fluid compartment, either through vomit or diarrhea. It's the loss of mostly water but we increase osmolarity. So transiently, extracellular fluid osmolarity is greater than intracellular fluid osmolarity. This now causes a shift of water from intra to extracellular fluid until osmolarity equalizes. So in the new steady state, extra and intracellular fluid osmolarities will be higher and equal to each other, but we've lost volume in both compartments. And that, my friends, is tonicity and fluid compartments in a nutshell.